first ever podcast at the mayor's office. Welcome into my house. I put those pictures up the other day. Well, you know, I got I got really got it going behind me. So I'm fired up for all you guys joining us out there uh, on No Filter. Uh, we're really excited about today. I was thinking I've been thinking about doing this for a while. And, uh, you know, I think it was one of those things like I was ready for the ready aim fire. I think this is more like a ready fire aim. You know, we're going to we're going to have some fun, get it going and see what happens. Uh, got my man, Rich Chinchamino, joining us, going to be uh, helping us help me out here, guide us along. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I think one of the cool things about, you know, this stage of being on no filter is that it can be very interactive. Uh, what's cool is there's a knock button down there. You know, if we get involved. Um, boom, you can you can hit on the knock and maybe come into the show, maybe not. We'll have to see how everything is going. But uh, I'm just excited, really excited to be here. We'll see what happens. And uh, Chinchi, what do you got, man? What do you got on the other side? Why don't you introduce yourself, brother? What's up? I'm just here along for the ride to push all the buttons that Sean can't push by himself. Uh, but are you as nervous about this, I guess, is the main question, as you were, like, on opening day back in the day when you were playing? Uh, dude, you know, Chinchi, you know what's funny, bro, is that, like, I think back to the opening day jitters. I think back getting traded from, uh, you know, getting traded from the Indians to the Reds opening day, about 14 hours from more opening day. You're talking about opening day jitters. Scared to death, man. I was scared to death. I pull up, boom, I'm going to be late for batting practice because I'm coming from Winter Haven, Florida. Just been traded. Uh, I, I trade for Dave Berber, the opening day starter for the Reds. I'm pulling in. I, I literally am I'm sick to my stomach, right? My stomach's turning so bad. And uh, and I, I walk in the clubhouse there in Cincinnati with the, with the opening day jitters like you wouldn't imagine. And, and, and opening day is huge in Cincinnati. It's the greatest opening day ever. It's like a, it's like a national holiday, right? And it's packed, right? And and the city's packed. The place is buzzing. But I'm I'm just this is my first time. I don't really totally understand that yet, but I can feel it. I walk in the clubhouse. Boom! I open the door. Who's the first guy I see? Johnny Bench is sitting there. I'm like, oh, oh. buddy, Johnny Bench is the First guy I see when I walk in the clubhouse, and I'm like, is this guy still playing? Is he, is he catching today? Like, I didn't, you know, I was like, it was unbelievable. And, and Johnny looks at me as only, jo as only Johnny can. He's like, hey, let's go, man. You're late for the season. Let's get it together. I'm like, oh my, and now I'm like so stressed out, right? So as Johnny says that to me, next thing I look over, and there's a naked Pete Harness walking up. And I don't know if you know Harness, you know, but not the best body in the big leagues, probably the funniest teammate I've ever had, but he's walking up, you know, a sloppy body walking up, and he's like, Hey, has anyone seen my toothbrush? And he's kind of looking where I can't see him. And I'm, I'm like, this is crazy. Johnny Bench, Naked Pete Harness. Harness is walking up and he's like, he's like, uh, hey, uh, has anyone seen my toothbrush? And he just keeps walking. And as he walks past me, his toothbrush is, is hanging out of his butt. And I'm like, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. You know, my opening day jitters are you're phenomenal. So I walk over, shake Johnny Bench's hand. I don't know if you've ever seen Johnny Bench's hands, though. He could fit like seven baseballs in his hand. I mean, it might be more, maybe eight. It was unbelievable. So I, I introduced myself to Johnny Bench, shake his hand. My hand just goes away. It just disappears. Like, that's why this guy is one of the greatest ever, right? So as that day goes on, I go out for, I go out 15 minutes, like 20 minutes before the game. I'm a little nervous, probably 30 minutes just to get out to the dugout. I'm obviously not playing that, that day. Jack McKeon doesn't have me in the lineup. I go out there. First thing I see in Cincinnati Riverfront Stadium, Synergy Field, boom, here comes an elephant. It's standing, standing in front of the dugout, and I'm like, I don't even know what's going on here. Like, this is crazy. An elephant's just dropping bombs, and, you know, in front of the in front of the dugout. You know, grounds crews cleaning it up. Here come some horses, cars, zoo animals. It turns out Marge Shot in the parade loved these animals, and she and she let the parade go through to finish up right before the game. It was just it was that yes, yeah, right game. Yeah, but, and Pete Harnish picks up. He does it again. Not only is he walking naked with his toothbrush, he comes and he takes one of the bigger <laughs> vats of uh, sunflower seeds and just dumping it into the elephant's trunk. And I'm like, this is this is Cincinnati, baby. And I was there eight years, and it was awesome. Every opening day in Cincinnati, the Major League Baseball needs to get back to Cincinnati. Opens up the season in Cincy, game one. So that's just that's my take. So yeah, did I have the jitters in? Yes. They're probably a little, you know, I had them today, but those were big time, bro. Those were big time chairs. Yes. All right. Well, I don't know how there's any other way to segue off of that to start talking baseball because <laughs> that was unbelievable. Uh, but let's just stick with the Reds. Your your take on the state of the team, and we'll rip through some of your biggest topics, what you're thinking leading into this. Go for it. Yeah, you know what? Hey, man, I like talking to Reds because they've played there a long time, but, you know, I think their lineup's been really good. Jesse Winker, I just think he's emerged really big time, even since last year, kind of came on the scene to say, 
He's one of the better hitters in the game. And I, you know, love to see him do what he's doing. Castellanos has been a, you know, obviously he does what he does. Big time hitter. Moustakis, Tucker Barnhart's one of the best catchers in the game. You know, wins, wins gold gloves. Denzel, Naquin. Uh, you know, I think one of the things that's been tough was Votto was kind of getting it going with some damage numbers, really putting up some big numbers. Uh, broke his thumb, I believe, a couple of days ago on an inside pitch, which isn't great. He's he's going to miss a month. But, you know, but right before that, he hit his 300th homer. If you go back and look at Joey Votto's career, man, you have to really respect. They're, of all the great history of the Reds and all the great players that have played there, only two other guys have 300 homers, Frank Robinson and Johnny Bench. So when you're starting to get in, when you get into that, you know, rare air, pretty impressive. So congratulations to Joey, but, you know, kind of a bummer that he got hit and he's been down. I think the bullpen, you know, really has been their Achilles heel all year long. You know, Amir Garrett struggling the way he struggled, you know, struggling. They're really relying on him at the back end there. So I think they're going to get it going, man. They're, they're hovering around 500. They, they got off to a hot start. They started scuffling a little bit, um, but I think they have a run in them with that starting rotation and, just got to get the bullpen cleaned up because that, that offense has got some firepower. Nice. All right, next topic we got going on is Means near perfect last night. Yeah. Wound up with a no-hitter. Your thoughts on that? Well, unbelievable. We almost had the perfect game at the uh, third strike wild pitch in the third. I mean, I just think it's great, man. Who doesn't love no-hitters, perfect games? It just shows how hard it is. You know, you saw Carlos Rodon do it uh, for the White Sox and just missed the perfect game, but – you know, for means to do it is, is pretty cool because I, I just think the Orioles have been so up and down. And, uh, you know, when you talk about that's the first individual no-hitter since Jim Palmer in 69. So good for the Oriole fans that get to cheer for that. And the team's been pretty good, too. They're hovering around 500. So, you know, we'll see where, where they go from there. Right. All right. One thing you were super fired up about on this first show that you wanted to talk about, you texted the other day, some Mets news that you didn't love. What do you got there? Yeah, you know what I didn't love? I didn't love, like, you know, I, I think it's, you know, they got rid of Chili Davis, who's the hitting coach there. You know, he came in a couple years ago, and I think the guys really like him. Chili's got a great reputation as a great hitting coach. And, uh, you know, I, I just think, like, uh, I think for me, you know, you're just, re, you're, you know, you're reacting to Lindor struggling. Uh, listen, anytime a guy goes to a new team, you're going to have some, you know, you're going to have some jitters. You're going to have – a little bit of that. I don't care if you're getting paid $340 million or whatever. You're one of the best people in the game. You're a human being. And Lindor has scuffed a little bit. He has some, you know, the Mets fans, if you're in New York and you're not playing well, you're going to get booed, you know, at times. And I think that's been a new thing for him too. Uh, Francisco Lindor is going to rake. The back of the baseball card doesn't lie. I mean, it's going to, at the end of this year, it's going to be somewhere around 300. It's going to be somewhere in the midst of 25 to 30 bombs with close to, you know, 80, 100 ribbies. He's going to play gold glove defense. And he's going to be a leader in the clubhouse. So, like, for them to, to – and, and Alonzo, if anybody, Alonzo has really picked it up, you know, after having a tough 2019, uh, you know, he, or 2020, he kind of picked it up, you know, this year. He's been swinging the bat well. Um, so, and I know and I know Alonzo even said something about, you know, man, it just doesn't seem like the right time, you know. So, for Chili Davis just to be fired this quick, I, I didn't love it. I think it was just a reaction to Lindor not, not doing well. So, um yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't like it. Uh, well, and you I, guys, it, you don't know, have to worry. I also think <laughs> when I go back to hitting coaches, you know, some of the – you know, your hitting coach in the big leagues is so different, you know, because the guys that are there are great hitters, right, and, and they, they kind of know what they're doing. Like a hitting coach for me, when I went back to Boston, Dave Magan was one of my favorite hitting coaches. He'd get you together. Hey, Case, give me two things you do, you know, at spring training. Give me two things that you do that – um that I can go to when you struggle. And I think a big thing for me was, you know, I, I was always like, man, I like to have my hands back. That was my mechanical piece. And then be relaxed and really see the ball late, try and drive it in the gaps, right? So whenever I would right. struggle, Dave Magan would come and say, hey, Case, are you getting your hands back? Are you relaxed? Jason Bay used to say, hey, I like to get my foot down and, you know, and, and really work uh, down to the baseball. And whenever Jason Bay would struggle, you know, he'd say he'd have those two keys. Same thing with Big Poppy. So, for me, that hitting coach is really a mental coach, too, and, and uh, I think Chili was that to those guys, but good luck to Chili. He'll, he'll land somewhere else. Just thought it was too quick of a trigger. All right. Actually, Sean, we actually have breaking news right now, thanks to the fans. I'm looking along the side, seeing, hey, look at John Heyman, look at Mark Feinstein. Albert Pujols being released by the Angels. It's just wow. happened. Wow. 
Wow. You think about that. We got to talk about that. Wow. Wow. I wonder, well, I guess my first thought is, did Albert have anything to, you know, did Albert have anything to do with it? Like as far as, you know, I don't know if it was injuries. Obviously his production has been down these last few years. Um, maybe they needed to open up a spot. Who knows? And this is his last year of his contract. So yeah, man, that's, that, that that's big news. You know, it, you know, the news is big news, but also when I think of Albert Pools, I think back to when he first broke in, I got to see, I got to see that show, you know, day in and day out in the NL Central. You know, when I was with the Reds in, two, I think he broke in in 2001. Right. This guy right from the gates, you know, getting to play him 18 times a year and seeing what type of talent that he was, he could go to right center. He would hit balls to right center uh, like a power hitting lefty. I mean, that's how so impressive he was. But the biggest thing about Albert Pujols was this guy never wasted a pitch. 162, I don't care if it was 9 nothing in the ninth inning, he's not wasting a pitch. Like, he's grinding you out. Like, that's why he would hit 360 every year. That's why he would drive in 120. That's why he would hit 40-some home runs and doubles. And he would he, – the, the coolest – the greatest thing about Albert Pujols was he was such a great hitter during his prime that his strikeout – his he walked so much more than he struck out. And he was just such a tough out. So, hey, listen, at the end of the day, Albert Pujols is Cooperstown bound. He's had one of the greatest careers the game's ever seen. And, and I'll tell you what, Chinch, one of the best hitters the game's ever seen and I've ever, I've ever seen up close and personal. Yeah. Three-time MVP, 10-time All-Star, currently ranks fifth with 667 home runs, fifth in doubles, second in RBIs, fifth in total bases, and fifth in extra base hits. Was with the Angels since 2011. And you could argue he's had a good career with the Angels. He kind of reinvented himself. But two guys now that are going to have to step – I mean, how could these two guys step up even more, Mike Trout yeah. and Shohei Otani? Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know if step up's the word just because, you know, Pools has been just kind of average these last couple of years. But, I mean, what we're seeing from these two guys is historic. I mean, what Otani's doing, uh, you, ne- you don't see this in, in Major League Baseball history of a guy dominating on both sides of the ball. For a guy to pitch the way he does – probably has the nastiest single pitch in the game with that split finger, freaking absolutely wipe out pitch, you know, was leading the league in home runs, you know, can flat out hit from the left side, tough out, drives the ball dead center, maybe better than anyone in the game. I mean, his power is off the charts. I, I think that if Otani continues to do what he's doing, how he's out, how is he not the MVP? And if he does it every year, how's he not the MVP every year for the impact that he has on both sides of the ball? So, it's really unbelievable to watch. I just hope Otani stays healthy. I think that's been the big thing. Stay healthy and see what he can do. Um, Trout's unbelievable because I think with Mike Trout, every year we're like, how can he get any better, right? How can he get any better? Can he, you know, he, he hits home runs. He steals bases. He hits for average. He plays great defense, right? And I think the great thing is when the season started, Trout looked back at 2020 and said, hey, my defense was a little below average. And I'm like, ah, you know what? This is Mike Trout's way of saying – how can I get a little better? How can I motivate myself? What chip can I put on my shoulder to take it to another level? And, you know, Trout, win, Chinch, Trout, Trout just wins MVPs. And then when he doesn't win the MVP, he's like second or third. And to see what he's doing this year, it's like, are you kidding me? Like the guy that's the best in the game is even getting better. Amazing. And then we'll keep an eye on, I mean, who knows if, if Pujols is going to retire or if maybe he's going to giving it a shot like some of the other guys. But let's move on a little bit. And if we get any more news, and again, if you're on that chat over there, you see something, say see something, say something, right? But let's move on to yeah. some surprising teams. There are three or four teams you've been thinking are surprises so far this year. What do you got? Well, you know what? I think the, the big surprise is it's kind of cool to go down the standings. You know, when you go down, you say, oh, hey, look, you know, you got – you got Oakland at 19 and 13. Obviously, they do it every year, but every year you're like, hey, who are the star players in that team? Well, you got Chapman, you got Olsen, but hey, they continue to do it. The Brewers are right, you know, they're a big time surprise team. 17 and 14 have really play, played well. I think the most surprising team so far has been the Giants. Because when you talked about the NL West, you said Dodgers, Padres, two team race, no doubt about it. I know we're one month into it, but hey, the Giants have really been doing a lot of things right. They've been matching up well. Uh, they're 18 and 13 sitting in first place there. So, you know, for me, that's that's that, that they've been the biggest surprise team. The team I think that'll be there in the end will be the A's again. They somehow figure it out. You know, yeah. Billy Bean and that whole crew uh, does a great job of, of, of mixing and matching that team. And, uh, you know, they're 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 right where they want to be again. And they'll, they'll be, uh, you know, they'll be doing it, doing what they always do. So it's uh, yeah. it's pretty cool. And I always think back to, you know, when I look at this place. 
Yeah, I look back there, you know, I see one of, you know, the 90, 1999 Reds for me was like that team that like just kept surprising. Like we we, we, we weren't supposed to do anything really. We, we, were, we were picked probably dead last that year. We had a great mix of betters. I mean, you go down like Mike Cameron was like, you know, the best leadoff guy, ran the stereo in the clubhouse. That's why I listened to DMX. I think I knew all the DMX <laughs> songs. And I'm like, I'm not really a DMX fan, but I am because – Mike Cameron played it every day for 162 games, 1999. So it was pretty – Cam ran the thing. Lark, obviously Barry Larkin, one of the greatest to ever play the game, but Lark was, you know, our captain, kind of ran the ship. Uh, you know, myself, so fortunate. Greg Vaughn, man, one of the greatest leaders a wow. team could ever have. For all the young guys like me and Aaron Boone and Pokey and Dimitri, you know, Vaughn, he was just that, that you know, that presence that we needed. Um, Dimitri Young, man, go back and look at, look at D-Train's career, one of the best – Hitters going, man, the flat out rake. Eddie Tobinsy behind the dish. You know, Tommy had some, had some thump. Aaron Boone, obviously the manager of the Yankees now. Booney, Booney, I always, I always joke around about Booney. Booney's, you know, Booney's, um, sweet spot was up at his neck. I'm like, you throw Aaron Boone in his neck, you're going to pay a dear price. I remember he had three, three home runs one game, all like at his chin. I'm like, dude, how are you getting on top of the ball? You, if you threw him a, a, a ball right down the middle of the boonie, he might roll over on it. You throw it at his neck, boom, it was a 440 feet in the gap. Unbelievable. And Pokey Reese, the single greatest defensive player I've ever played with. What was crazy about Pokey is he spoiled me so bad because when I played first and he played second, I never had to go to my right because uh. he had everything to, he had everything to my right. He had everything to short right field. He had everything to Lark's left up the middle. And he had, he had short right field. It was one of the most unbelievable things to watch. I was spooled playing with Pokey Reese, how good he was defensively. Sick, man. Uh, all right. So let's talk about surprise players now. We're talking teams just now. You got two guys on your radar who, well, people might think they're surprises. You might not. Yeah, well, a lot of great surprises this year, I think. But the two guys I want to focus on are, you know, just to watch Byron Buxton do what he's doing. I know a few years ago we were all like, this guy is the uber prospect. This is the guy, five tools, legit, does everything, you know, unbelievable. And I think, you know, for me it was, uh, you know, to look and see what he's doing this year. You know, he's, he's, he's got over 800 slug. He's hitting for power. I believe he's got right around nine home runs. Um, he's obviously playing a gold glove center field, dominating there. Uh, but just to watch Buxton do what he's doing, his average has been up all year long. I think we've started to see it coming um, these last few years. You always see glimpses of it. But I think if Buxton stays healthy and can continue to put up these numbers, he's one of the most exciting guys in the game because he's, he's got big-time speed. He's leading the league in doubles. Uh, you know, so I just – I love what Buxton's doing. And, and the other, another guy, you know, that caught on, Corey Kluber. You know, signed that one-year deal with the Yankees. You're taking a flyer on him. He's been hurt. You know, coming back the last couple of years with some injuries, and bam, what does he get? What does he get? Pitcher of the week, uh, 14 innings pitch, 15 Ks, uh, his last two starts. I mean, this guy just knows how to pitch with that little cutter, slider. Uh, just fun to see guys like that, that, you know, you, you start writing off, hey, he's hurt, he's not getting it done, and all of a sudden, bam, he's back in the mix as one of the, you know, better pitchers in the game. And, you know, leave it to the Yankees to take that flyer and have that one-year 11 million just sitting under the couch cushions, you know? Yeah, nice. Well, one guy who seems like he's got the stuff to be a super big time player in the jeans is a young man named Jack Leiter right now. Yeah, man, it's so funny to see Jack Leiter just lighten, lighten it up, no pun intended. But, you know, it's funny with, with Jack is he was eight years old when we met him, you know, a few years back. And, you know, it's amazing to see him, uh, you know, doing what he's doing at Vanderbilt. And this guy's a special talent, was special. I, I, I got a chance to coach him in the Under Armour All-America game a few years ago. And you could see his polish. Like, you could see that Al's his dad. You could see his mentality was a little different with the pedigree. Um, through all his pitches, so much good, so much polish. His four-seamer has a little two-seamer. Really good curveball, slider. Got a good changeup. Doesn't need to throw it so much at Vanderbilt because you don't need it that much. But he'll need it at the big leagues. And, you know, living here in Pittsburgh, uh, you know, I know they have the number one pick. So it's going to be interesting to, interesting to see, uh, you know, if they grab grab him at number one. Um they should. They'd be crazy not to. Ben Cherrington and the boys pretty much have, you know, a no doubt stud, you know, sitting there. The other guy on their team, uh, Kumar Rocker, who's the, who's the other big time ace in that team. You know, people say he could be number one too, but man, Jack Leiter's sitting pretty right now. Could be the number one pick in the draft in a couple weeks. Yeah, if he goes number one and Al Leiter gives you a call and says, "Hey, man, <laughs> you know, my kids stay with you for like a year or so," what do you? What's your answer? Uh, 
you kidding me? I said, Jack, you got the whole basement, bro. I got I got a refrigerator down there. You're taking. I got an in and out in and out door down there. Garage opens right to the basement. You got a big screen TV. I'll put PlayStation down there if you want. Jack Lighter, he can live with me for a year. I don't care. I'd love yeah. that here. All right. So moving on to our next topics, and these are kind of like your uh, quotes of the week, stuff you've heard about or seen about. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's let's do this guy first. We've been talking about this. This will be our random, our random fact of the week. Pedro, <laughs> who did this oh. out? Or no, this was on Instagram. And here's his question. Come on, be honest. Who's cuter? Ah. Him or his dog, Sean? Oh, Pedro's the best. Pedro, I don't know, man. Your dog's pretty cute. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, 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 I think you look cute with the, with the yellow sandals you got on, the yellow shorts. But I'm going to have to say, Petey, right there, I think your dog's a little cuter than you are. That's wonderful. Is that, is that right. okay? He's going to kill yeah, me. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what, what you said. It, you, you, you couldn't have said it better myself. All right. So <laughs> now we are moving on to your quote of the week. We'll get this. Here's the first one. Kyle Gibson. This is a couple of days ago. That was a lot of fun being back on that mound in front of Twins fans. This is when he came back the other night facing his former team, pitching against guys that are like brothers. Every bit of fun that I had it Hoped it to be celebrating this morning with some Dunn Bros, which I found as a coffee shop, and a round of golf. Case, I guess the question is, you know, facing your former teammates, what's that like, man? Man, that is – that. It, it, listen, it's fun and it's weird. You know, I remember when I got traded from the Reds to the Pirates, that first spring training, you know, we, we were in – it was weird because you just kind of – Bradenton and Sarasota, are, you know, they connect, right? And, you know, that first year – uh you know, we would we played the Reds so much with the Pirates. And I, I remember all, all the years I was with the Reds, we played the Pirates all the time. So the first game we're playing against the Reds, and I look over in the dugout, and there's Griff, and there's Kearns, and there's LaRue, and there's Dunner. All these guys are like my great friends. And it's it's a weird – I must admit, like, I did not like it at first. I really didn't because, you know, you're a human being. I played it and was playing eight years over with the Reds. Next thing you know, I'm with the Pirates, which I love being in Pittsburgh. But to play – your your friends and your buddies that are over there it's just an eerie feeling I, I got more used to it as we played during that season but the first time is always the weirdest uh and i think after the game i got together with dunner and dunner and kernsey and larue some of those guys but no doubt you know when you when you play against your your ex team it's definitely a weird feeling i can't imagine all right next topic this is from your boy adam jones Tweeted out a shot from minor league baseball saying MILB is back. And his quote was, so glad these young men get to start their journeys. Best of luck to all. My question to you is, how important was your time in a minors and how important is it to develop in a minors case? Yeah, I got, I got, I got some, I got some fe weird feelings about the minor leagues, like in a good, all, all good. But and then some of the things that are happening now, when you think about it, like I remember my first year in the minors, you get 850 bucks a month. You know what I mean? It's like, <sighs> I mean, I, I was living with four dudes. We're in this do little shack dorm, you know what I mean? Because we're all putting our money together, to, you know, to afford to afford rent. And a lot of those minor leaguers, you know, they those guys are great players, you know, that need that minor leagues to develop. I spent two and a half years in the minors with the Cleveland Indians, my first year in Watertown, New York, and then my next year in Kinston, North Carolina. Then I played in Akron, Buffalo, then the big leagues. But I needed that time to develop. You know, the Indians were great about kind of developing us and letting us come up. Um, but the minor leagues, you know, it, it's it, it's not as glamorous as you think. You know, I think at some point, you know, I'd love to see these guys unionize where, you know, they start to get a better wage. They start to make a little bit more money because, you know, it's it, it's tough, uh, you know, being a minor leaguer, especially if you have a family. But, hey, those guys are trying to live the dream. They're trying to put the numbers up where they can get to the big leagues. And, and uh, there's a lot of good players out there. So I'm, I'm glad to see them back. Last year they lost their season. You know, and I think that's tough, too. You're not getting paid well. You probably not. They only got paid for a few months, I think, of pay. So, you know, talk about really grinding. They were really grinding last year when the, when the canceled for COVID. Yeah. Here, just one quick note here from one of the fans here. Fan experience at minor league games is really cool. So close, entertaining, great family time. That's true, too. Uh, yeah, you know, I, think the cool, I think the coolest thing about the minor leagues is the greatest thing was uh, Chinch. You know, the, like you'd always have an act every night. Like even as a minor league player, like it's cool. Like the Blues Brothers would come in their car and they'd have the big phone. You know, here they come, Elwood and Jake and Elwood out there, like singing the, you know, Raw Hyde. You know, they're always doing their thing. So, you know, it's just, uh, you know, the minor leagues is great, man. Minor leagues is great. 
And uh, I think every minor league would like to get to the big leagues, but the minor league time, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, you need it. Those guys need it. Yeah. Nice. All right. Here's one. This is one of my favorites. And I'd like your answers to this because it's important to all of us. Justin Verlander, oh, former hurt. teammate, needs your help. Looking for something to binge? Any good TV shows you guys recommend? Peace. Oh, I got one. Oh, dude. I, I mean, it just pops right into my head. I'm, I'm, I got Thomas Shelby going right now on Peaky Blinders. It's a great show. It's a great yeah. You've got to put the closed captioning on, though, because they got, like, the Irish accents kind of. And, like, <laughs> you're, you're, like, you're in it. And you're like, what'd they say? I missed it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you, you got to have the closed caption on. Because I started to watch Peaky Blinders for, like, the first few episodes maybe a year ago. And I was like, I can't get into this. I don't think I – but then I put the closed caption on. Bam. New world opened up. So, Peaky Blinders is great. I always think, like – if you haven't seen Breaking Bad, uh, if you've been living under yeah. a rock, get your act together. Uh, you know, and I think uh, Sons of Anarchy was a good one. Um, there's a lot, a lot of good ones out there. But those, those the show, my, my entire good. family on both sides watches a show called Big Sky right now, and you, you have to see it. It's actually pretty intense. It's on, I think it's on ABC. Okay. All right. Big Sky. All right. Like but it. hey, Sean, this is a moment we've all been waiting for here. What we're going to do next. Are you ready for oh, it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell, tell, tell well, everybody what's going on here. I, I'm a little nervous, but this is something we came up with, Chinch. I was thinking, you know what? I love I love baseball cards. Um, Goldline Collectibles, a, a company that I'm part of, um, you know, sent us some pack, sent us some packs. So I figured, what if we could open up a pack? You know, it's a small fraternity baseball. There there has to be a way to open up a pack and then just and, and have a story. So I so I said, all right, let's let's see if we can open up a pack and have a story. And if I don't. I don't have to figure out what I what I do if I don't have one, but I you know hopefully we have one. I got well, here. I let's got do this. Questions. Hold on, I'm going to do this I got, too. I'm going to start with a little theme song here, and if the if you guys think the theme theme song should stay, stay it. If you think it sucks, I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, but go ahead. How many packs you got? Go for it. I got three packs. One is Night Night Diamond Kings. Boy, I think I need glasses changed. I don't know what's happening. They say when you get to I'm 46. They say oh. when you get to 45, it starts happening, but. <laughs> 1988 Diamond Kings, and this one is 1988 All Star Team Fleer. I think I'm going to go with the Donruss 1990. Donruss 1990. Okay. What do you think about the music? You like it or not? For some reason, I'm having technical difficulties. I can't hear it. Oh, okay. Well, screw it. There Let's it is. There right. it is. Okay, you ready? Hey, yeah. Lance Johnson. Lance Johnson's the first card. I do have a story about Lance Johnson, so it's not like an awesome story, but at least I'm feeling good about myself. Out the gates, I can say something. Now, dude, it's unbelievable. Like this is this is this is the pack because this is my guy. It's unbelievable he's in this pack. Will Clark was my idol growing up, dude. Like I wanted to play baseball because of Will Clark. You know, you go back and look at the. I think it was the '85 College World Series. I was 11 or 12 years old. I was 11. And uh, Mississippi State was like the best team in the in the, in the game. Raphael Palmero, Will Clark, Bobby Thigpen, Jeff Brantley. They were loaded. A bunch of big leaguers on the team. Remember how Will Clark played the game? I just absolutely loved them. So that could be the story right there. Bill Schroeder, no. Otis Nixon, not really. By the way, Long people way. are loving the music. You might not hear it, but I'm playing it. Cause... Love it, bro. Keep it going. Todd Stoudemire. Todd looks like he's... Like a 14 year old teenager right there, Todd. Oh my God. You were so dominating people. Jeffrey Leonard, was that one flap down? Jeffrey Leonard? I think he was yeah. Clark's back in the day. I think Burns and Will, Will the Thrill, if you've ever seen that. Deuce is Wild with Burns yes. and Will Clark. Great show. They were talking about that the other night, Jeffrey Leonard. Jeff, Darty, Garrett, Greg. Oh, last card. Oh. Okay, oh. Okay. okay. I got a couple stories here. You know, it's tough to pick. I'm sure I'm going to – the fact that I have Will Clark and Griffey in this pack is unbelievable. For the first show, thank you for the first <laughs> show. Um, we'll go – I got some great Griffey stories, but we'll save that for another day because they're, they're good ones. I'm going to okay. tell the Will Clark story because I was just thinking about Votto. Um, and I'll tell you why when I, I get to the end of the story, why it relates to Votto right now. So Will Clark my, is my idol, man. He's my idol. He's Eric Burns' idol. He's that a lot of guys' idol, right? And, you know, back in the day – you know, you get to see him in the play. I remember in the playoffs against the Cubs and Wrigley when he was dominating. I just loved the guy, man. Like I said, it was the reason I wanted to play. I loved his intensity. I wanted to play like him. And so um, two th I played 98 in the big leagues, 99 in the big leagues. And in 2000, I still hadn't met Will Clark. I'm like, man, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to meet my idol, you know. And to tell you the truth, I'm kind of 
kind of nervous to meet my idol. You know, when you meet a guy that you've loved so much, you're like, man, I hope this guy's not a jerk. You know, I just want him to be, be a good dude, you know? <laughs> so, sure enough, 2000 comes, 2000 season, we have spring training, and the day before season starts, we're going up to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we, we're, we're opening up their double-A stadium, and we're playing the Baltimore Orioles, right, in an exhibition game. So I'm fired up. It's going to be great. Will Clark's going to be there. I know that. Greg Lynn, our trainer, was the tr trainer for the Giants back in the day when Will the Thrill was really doing his thing. So I'm like, oh, man, this is so cool. It's so cool. So Greg Lynn comes out to me. I'm like a little kid. I'm like so nervous. He comes out to me during batting practice when both teams are kind of, you know, they're all out there. Everyone's kind of getting ready to go for BP. And Greg Lynn's like, hey, Case, you want to meet the Thrill? I'm like, you know it, Greg. Are you kidding me? I'm, I'm like, wait my whole life to meet this guy. So he goes over. He's like, come with me. And I'm like so nervous. And he's like, Thrill, can I talk to you? He's like, hey, what's up, Gregor? How you doing, man? He comes over. He's like, hey, I got a guy that wants to meet. It's Sean Casey. And he's like, oh, man, you know, nice to meet you. You know, I love your swing. You know, I was like, oh, my God, this guy loves my swing. I was like, I, I literally, I literally, like, like modeled my swing after Will Clark. It didn't, at the end, it looked like my swing. Like, it kind of got tired over the time. It wasn't as, wasn't as awesome as Will Clark's beautiful swing. But it was literally like, you know, he had the cape going, boom, he would swing the Batman, you know? So I go up, he comes up, he's like, nice to meet. I'm like, oh my guys, I go, I turn into a 12 year old. I'm like, hey man, I just want to tell you that I had your, uh, you had your posters on my wall. I had every Sports Illustrated article you ever in. I kind of a stalker, but I lived in Pittsburgh. So, you know, Eric Burns, you know, lived in San Fran. So obviously he could have definitely stalked you and got in trouble, but I was in Pittsburgh. And I couldn't stalk, you know, so I literally turned into this like 12 year old boy. I'm like, it's so nice to meet you. I've been such a big fan. Love the way you play the game. Love it when you slide in for a double and you give it this. When you score home, you give it that, you know, and I used to do that too. It's so great. So, boom, I meet my idol. He's so nice. Like, I was so thankful he was nice because he was, I was like, that's so great. Will the thrill, baby. My life's complete, right? So, yeah. first inning we go. Will Clark's hitting third, just getting ready to rip. Ron Ballone's on the mound, lefty. Now, Valone throws a lot of two-seamer slider, like two-seamer slider. That's that, that's the big rig. That's what he threw, right? And so first standing comes up. Now, we're in Chattanooga where they got a brand-new stadium. The infield's kind of, you know, it's brand-new infield. So it's like it's not there where it needs to be, and they're they're going to try probably try probably over the season get it right where it needs to be. Sure enough, Will the Thrill comes in. Ronnie Valone tries to sneak uh, a little cheese by a rat. Will Clark says, no, Will the Thrill Clark, baby. You can't be – bam! Drops absolute bad head on this freaking inside he heater. <laughs> he turns one over to me, Chinch. It hits no. the it hits the the dirt right in front of me. I just like it it, it kicks up a bad hop. Boom! Ends up hitting my it hits my throwing hand. Bam! Like this, and I'm like I'm like man, that hurt. But I was like, that's Will Clark. It's cool, you know. I'll, I'll take a shot off the thumb. You know, goes in the right field. So sure enough, you know, I'm I'm, I'm stung a little bit after the ending. Jack McKean takes me out because it's last game before opening day. Like what the worst thing. Last game before down. opening day. Oh, yeah. It's like you wait all spring training to stay healthy. You don't want to be hurt, you know, Ugh. day before opening day. So I go down in the clubhouse. I, you know, I um, I don't know my thumb's broke. My hands are breaking my thumb. Like Joey Votto, like a little different. He he threw me a, a rocket. I didn't get hit by a pitch. But Will Clark hit me a rocket. But I'm in the clubhouse. I'm all iced up. Will the thrill. Another, another moment. I think the broken thumb got me another moment. Will the thrill. He comes over, you know, because our clubhouse is, you know, then they connected. So Will comes over, you know, um, and he's got, he's all iced up, ready to go. He's out of the game. He's like, man, are you all right? I was like, yeah, I think I'm all right. I just got my thumb. It was a little swollen, you can see. He's like, oh, man. He's like, you know, apologize. But you'll, you'll be fine. Rub some dirt on it. You know, I'm like, yeah. So he sends me over a back chance, you know. Case, yeah. good luck this season. You're a sweet swinging lefty. Will the throw Clark. And I'm like, oh, yes. So it turns out that night I go to, back to Cincinnati, MRI, boom, broke my thumb out for the first five weeks of the year. But if you don't want Chinch, I'll take it, yeah. baby. I got a bat for the broken five weeks out. I got a bat from Will Throw Clark, got a chance to meet him, but he broke my thumb the first time I meet him. Can't believe it. That's my story, baby, and I'm sticking to it. Oh, That's the my most God. I've well, ever heard you speak at once, ever. And you feel good? That's it. You just did 35 minutes of live something. You like it? <laughs> We'll get back to Griffey. I might, I might have to save this card over here. I don't know. Should we do something with too many stories in a pack and you just save them over here? I don't know. I'm going to do that. I'll save the Griffey right here because I got some good Griff stories too. But Will the Thrill to, to start the first ever show. You kidding me? Freaking Idol just pops in the pack. Thank you, God. That's how I feel. Hey, I tell you what, man. Chinchy, this has been yeah. great, dude. I, th I think we ran it, right? We we, we, we pulled it off. We, we were going to say ready, fire, aim. So, you know. 
we uh, we we want the feedback, everybody. We, we for all the people that are here, thanks so much um, with the chats and everything. And um, we will bring we will open up that knock button uh, and bring you guys in. Should we bring somebody in at the end here, Chinch? Yeah, who do you got? Go for it. Why not? I got, I got it. Oh, I'm getting at it. Should we bring Burns in? Burns, he wants yeah. to come in. Bring him in. All bring right. him in. Come on, Burns, you come in, baby. You got it. Wait, hang on. He's gonna come in. This is the first time doing this, guys. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to get him in. I'm trying to get Burns okay. here in here on the knock. Yeah, this let's is go. Really to the oh, there he comes. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh no! What? Here we go. This first, hey, you this, that the San Diego chicken. I mean, first off, you're Jack Diesel. Would you just run? You just run a marathon or something? <laughs> <laughs> dude, friend, I, like, I have so many thoughts about what what just transpired right now. Like, I mean, dude, I've been taking notes over here. First of all, Kitch, you know, Case has been on the platform before, but mm -hmm. you just reinvented no filter network you just <laughs> proved that we could run a real show on this network like dude the graphics the porn music you had it all going man so kids <laughs> more than anything first of all click your video i need to see the two of you when i talk to you i oh, not all the time i'm on bro bro it, it is it, it is it is it, it was so clean I'm sitting here though, and this is why I put the chicken head on. I took my shirt off anyway, it was already off because I got back from the run. <laughs> Bert, you, you, live, you live your life with your shirt off, okay? I know that. It, I mean, the, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny, Tara was just up here, but it could have gotten really weird if she was here, but she just went downstairs. And anyhow, so to Chick, first of all, yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. Like the, the, the way you guys were pulling the tweets in and out, the, in, in the topic of conversations, uh, once again, the adult, the adult film music for the the baseball card unpacking. Um, Case, I, I have a couple legitimate questions here, and, and I'm very serious oh, about my, this. Right? You can still, please, please. All right, okay. number number one. I I would say the single greatest phrase that has ever been uttered on No Filter Network is "The storm is coming." We have a, a new, we have a new fan base here uh today and so i would like you to explain the quote the storm is coming to everybody on the stream here today oh I, well Burns, I, you know i do that show with brian kane and we were talking who's you know a mental coach we talk about the mental game of baseball and i i always tell uh you know i always tell my kids like you know for me it's you versus you when you're playing in the big leagues when you're in the batter's box you know Failures built into the game, and at some point you're going to struggle, right? And like you have to find a way to talk to yourself, to stay positive, and find a way to really, you know, really make sure that you stay in the moment. And so for me, you know, the word slump, I didn't believe in. I never said it for 12 years of my career, 15 years. I never said the word. I just believed that I need to make make some adjustments, right? That's all I thought. But what I did say to myself was when I struggled, if I was 0 for 4, 0 for 8, whatever. And the media would say, hey, you're really struggling right now. You know, not even to the media. I would say, I remember saying to a lot of teammates, hey, man, you know, what do you think? I say, hey, man, the storm's coming tomorrow. Like, I'm coming for somebody tomorrow. Like, no matter who I'm facing, like, whether it was the best pitcher on earth or, or whoever, like, the storm's coming tomorrow. Like, somebody's about to pay. Like, and I just kept that mentality in my head to, to, to make sure for myself that my confidence stayed at a place where I needed it to stay. So the storm, the storm is coming for me, Bernsey was something to say, no, believe in yourself, keep going, you're coming to get somebody, keep it, keep, keep your thought process right where you need to keep it. All right, the second thing is, we just got back from Vegas, we played in a perfect game tournament with the uh, 11 you let them play squad. And if there was one piece of advice that you would give as a mentor to an 11 you player at this stage of their you could say childhood, adolescence, or career. Yeah, you know what, Burns? It's great because I've, I've, ex my, my oldest son Andrew's nineteen, my other son's Jake is eighteen. So I, I've experienced that eleven-year-old, you know, twelve-year-old travel and all that stuff. You know, for me, when I go, if I go back to eleven, I would say to kids, "Hey, we are here to have fun. Like, 
Develop relationships with your teammates. Be a good teammate. Play the game hard. Have sleepovers after the game. Like the biggest thing for me is let's build memories. Let's build memories. And I think when you're 11 years old, a big thing I would say is when you get in that box, let's have some fun and compete and let's see it and hammer it. Let's go get somebody, boys. Like I would say the have fun part for me, Burns, it would be the biggest thing because, you know, at the end of the day, you you know, you only play baseball for so long. So who knows how long those kids are going to play? Hopefully they have a great experience with the game at 11. So now here we are, no filter, where once again, I just got back from Vegas and I was looking at the odds to win the World Series for this year. Of, the, of all the teams, the Dodgers are plus 300, New York the Yankees plus 750, San Diego Padres plus 800, the Mets are plus 1,000, and then it kind of goes down from there. You mentioned the A's. The A's are plus 1,600. So for every $100 that I bet, I would get 1,600 back if I took the A's. At this stage of the season, who is the best bet to win the World Series? I mean, you know, obviously teams are doing, you know, are having a good runs. The, the, the A's are 19 and 13, Boston's 18 and 13, and they're doing well. Cardinals, come on, man. At the end of the day, I look at the Dodgers and I go, wow, like that 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 team's fully loaded. I'd have to think the Dodgers, and I and I also think, you know, I mean, I know it's 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 kind of like the Homer thing, but like the Padres with that rotation with what they're doing, and I'd say the White Sox with that rotation, they're, they're a sleeper team. They got some they got some firepower in that lineup, so. I'd say the Dodgers right out the gates, but like the other teams that I see, you know, I think the White Sox will be in that mix. And don't count out Alex Cora and the Red Sox too with some of the thunder they've been throwing out. So the White Sox at plus 1,100, Chance, your thoughts? I like the A's. I, I, honestly, if I were ever going to do anything like that, hold on, I'm going to do video, I'll do video. If I ever do something like that, I always I always go for the bigger ones. Like So I like the A's. I like the, what is it, 1,600? You're going for the right. underdog, the underdog horse, Chinchy. Always, know. because when they when they hit, they hit, and you know I can pay for all this stupid equipment you made me buy. <laughs> Come on, Chinch. Hey, send that bill to no filter, dude. <laughs> One Hi, Bernie. deal. Hey, Bernie. Bernie, we're wrapping it up, brother. You take your chicken uh, head off, and uh, you know go get your shirt on, take a quick shower, and uh, we'll catch you next week, brother. Join us again. <laughs> Hey man, seriously, I, I I love you guys, dude, and I I can't I can't say uh, anything else other than I'm just super stoked to have you guys both on here. I say two of the greatest people that I've ever met, and, and two of the most professional consummate pros that I've ever worked with. You dudes, uh, the right combination here, and Finch, man, you're 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 actually making this thing look legit, dude. <laughs> I'm not. I'm so not used to not working for like a national TV network. And I keep looking around trying to listen to see if a phone's going to ring. <laughs> I kind of like this. Me too. Me too, brother. All right, man. Chinchy, a right. uh, great first show, brother. Steven, we're going to get you in next week. And uh, we're taking off. Mayor's Office podcast in the books. And uh, ready, firing. We did it, brother. I'll see you next week. Thanks, Thank you, man. Thanks for everybody who joined us. Thank you.